the car of the future is, of course, built upon great technology that's being innovated today. Today's state-of-the-art technology includes what is called ADAS, driver assistance, advanced driver assistance systems, that helps to keep cars and keep drivers out of harm's way. There's all kinds of technology that's available today, from um, a cruise control that uh, adjusts the speed, depending on the car that you're following, to lane departure warnings that veers you slightly back into the, into the center of the lane if they see you drifting too far away from the edge of the, to, to the edge of the lane when you don't have your signal uh, lights on, to blind spot detectors, to parking assistance. ADAS technology has really evolved a great deal over the last several years. It could even help you park, uh, do a parallel parking assist. These pieces of technology are made possible largely through three basic fundamental technologies. One of them is radar. Radar has the benefit of going very far. It can detect an object. It can do it well at night. It can also, of course, penetrate fog. It does their job equally well, whether it's in the middle of the day or at night. It uses ultrasound technology that is relatively low cost. When you come close to something in a slow way, it can measure the distance relatively well. So when you're doing your parking, and it says that you're 16 inches away, 15 inches away, 12 inches away. That technology is based on ultrasound. And of course, increasingly, we're starting to see video technology using cameras. This is the state of the art of ADAS technology today. Incredible amounts of technology that is built piece by piece into the car. Each one of these detectors are autonomous or independent. Increasingly, we're also seeing that this technology is being replaced more and more by camera technology. And the reason for that is because cameras are getting better and better. Camera technology is benefiting from all of the same things that the consumerization of mobile chips is benefiting from. More mobile devices, higher resolution cameras, higher dynamic range cameras, the ability to detect image at night in dark rooms. These cameras are getting better and better over time. Increasingly, we can imagine what used to be radar systems be replaced by camera systems. Now, these cameras could be smart cameras or not smart cameras. And smart cameras are, are uh, cameras that are also uh, includes object detection, basic computer vision technology that detects objects and warns you against car in front or pedestrian road signs, et cetera. Now, one of the things that we're really excited about, as more and more of these sensors are replaced by cameras, not only are we reducing the cost dramatically, we're reducing the power that's consumed by these radar systems, we can bring these ADAS technology deeper into mainstream cars. Much of these ADAS technologies are available only in the highest end cars. But the thing that's really cool is, if we were able to replace the vast majority of these sensors with cameras, and we have the ability to unify the information that is sensed by these cameras, we might be able to do something really magical with it. If we wanted to lead towards, ultimately, driver assistance towards the road to autonomous self-driving cars, autopiloted cars, there are several things that we have to solve. The first thing that we have to solve, of course, is that the car needs to be able to build an environment model around it. If all of those cameras were connected to a central processor, the ability to use all of that imagery to build the environment model around the car will become possible. The second thing, of course, is that the car has to become self-aware. Self-aware as in situationally aware. It has to be able to see and understand what is happening around it, in front of it, beside it, behind it, become situationally aware. In order to lead to an autonomous driving car, we have to be able to do path, path planning. Based on the situation, based on the environment, the car has to plan its path. And of course, 
because none of this technology is possible on day one. And just as we are continuously learning, the car has to become software updatable. It has to become able to learn. It has to be heavily based on software updates over time. In a way, the car of the future is going to become a, become a software-defined car. Software is going to become a greater, greater aspect of it. So we imagine all of these cameras around the car being connected to essentially a supercomputer, a supercomputing processor, if you will. And that supercomputing processor, that computing platform we're introducing today, it's called the Drive PX. The Drive PX The Drive PX consists of two Tegra X1s. They could be working in parallel. They could be working as a redundant processor to each other. Combined, it has 2.3 teraflops of computing throughput, computing horsepower. It is able to connect to up to 12 high-definition cameras and process 1.3 billion pixels per second. 1.3 billion pixels per second. Now to put that in perspective, these 12 cameras can be full HD, running at 60 hertz, and these dual TX1s will still process every one of those pixels. It is completely CUDA programmable with the latest CUDA 6.0, Thank you. And it introduces two technologies that are truly revolutionary. The first is a computer vision technology based on deep neural nets. And the second is a brand new technology called surround vision. But before I show you this, let me first illustrate the pipeline to you. And one of the reasons why it's so important to connect all of these cameras into a super processor. Now these cameras that surround your car, it could be three cameras in the front, one with tight focal, um, long distance, one with uh, wide, wide field view. It could be side cameras, it could be rear cameras, it could be internal cameras, it could be digital mirrors, smart mirrors. All of these cameras would feed into the Tegra X1-based Drive PX. Inside the Drive PX, all of those pixel data comes in to a crossbar, which is then fed to two powerful processors. Excuse me, four powerful processors. The VPE, uh, the ISP first, which is responsible for the 1.3 gigapixels of data, has the ability to do white balancing, color correction, gamma correction, all kinds of image processing functionality. You can record all of this information into, of course, the data recorder inside the car. We can record dual 4K at 30 hertz. And then, of course, there's the 256 processor core GPU. Now, together, we're going to be able to now have access to all of the gigapixel information coming from all of these cameras, and together, now we have to figure out a way to create the environment, understand the environment, understand the situation that the car is in, find its path, and keep the drivers out of harm, harm's way. Okay? So at the core, this is the block diagram. 